In this lecture, we uh, will discuss uh, another uh, vertical axis reaction turbine uh, that uh, works with water, namely the Kaplan turbine. Uh, the Kaplan turbine is uh, very similar to the Francis turbine in that they are both reaction turbines and they are both uh, vertical axis hydraulic turbines. However, the uh, Kaplan turbine is an axial turbine as uh, may be uh, seen in this figure. The flow, is, uh, flow through the runner or rotor is ax uh, axial in the case of the Kaplan turbine. Uh, the layout of the Kaplan turbine uh, is uh, quite similar to that of the Francis turbine. Water from the uh, dam reservoir is brought through the uh, penstock to uh, the scroll casing, which is uh, shown on both sides here in uh, sectional view. And uh, the water then uh, goes through a set of uh, guide vanes, uh, radial guide vanes that are located here. And after passing through the radial guide vanes, the flow changes direction and flows axially and then passes through the rotor uh, in, uh, in the axial direction. It then enters the draft tube, like we saw for the um, uh, case of the Francis uh, turbine. Okay, the main difference is that this is an axial turbine in contrast to the uh, uh, Francis turbine, which is a radially inward flow turbine. Uh, Kaplan turbines are generally used for power generation under low head and high discharge conditions. Uh, and the runner, as we uh, already mentioned, is of axial flow type. Uh, the pressure in the scroll casing is the hydrostatic pressure due to the entire head because the water from the dam reservoir is brought uh, through the penstock pipe to the uh, scroll. So the pressure here is the entire, uh, the hydrostatic pressure due to the entire head. Uh, and the pressure decreases as the fluid flows through the runner and leaves. Now, in this design, the decrease in pressure along the streamline uh, is solely due to uh, DC being positive uh, by virtue of the blade shape. Note that DU in this case is zero because it's an axial flow turbine. So if you take a streamline that passes through the rotor, there is uh, hardly any change in the radius of the streamline. So DU is zero. And uh, the change in pressure is entirely due to uh, the increase in relative velocity across the, uh, across the runner. Since the pressure changes in the runner, um, like uh, in the case of the Francis turbine, uh, the uh, turbine must always run full and the casing also has to be sufficiently thick to withstand the hydrostatic uh, stress. And uh, the Kaplan turbine is obviously a reaction turbine because uh, the pressure changes uh, through the runner. And as uh, mentioned before, the effective head in the case of the Kaplan turbine uh, can also be increased by the installation of a draft tube, which is customary in almost all Kaplan turbine installations. Um, now, in contrast to the Francis turbine, the purpose of the guide vanes is uh, slightly different in the case of a Kaplan turbine. So here, uh, the guide vanes are radial and um, uh, what they attempt to do is to impart um, uh, a tangential or circumferential component of velocity uh, to the fluid as it leaves the guide vein. So as the fluid leaves the guide vein, a um, uh, swirl component is introduced. So the flow goes from being a radially swirling flow at the end of the guide vein to an axially swirling flow once it reaches the runner. Okay, Because the angular moment of the fluid is uh, uh, I'm sorry, the angular momentum of the fluid is conserved uh, when it goes from the guide vein to the runner, uh, the uh, swirl component uh, increases as it uh, uh, increases near the hub, uh, whereas near the tip, it more or less remains the same as, uh, as the value at the exit of the guide vein. Okay, so the swirl introduced by the guide vein is uniform across its height. So in the following passage, the flow changes from being a swirling radial flow to a swirling axial flow. And so the uh, swirl component of velocity V theta approaching the uh, blade varies inversely from hub to tip uh, as in a free vortex flow owing to conservation of angular momentum. So at entry to the rotor blade, then R times V theta is a constant. So, uh, so a certain amount of V theta is induced in the flow by the guide vanes here. And when the flow approaches the inlet of the rotor blade, R times uh, V theta is a constant. So which means V theta is very high near the hub of the blade. 
and uh, lesser near the tip. And in addition to this, the blade speed uh, u also varies from the hub to tip in direct proportion to the radius since u is equal to r omega. So these two facts together uh, result in the blade being uh, highly twisted from hub to tip. So if you look at this blade, you can see that from hub to tip, the blade is highly twisted, which is uh, in contrast to the rotor of a Francis turbine. Uh, we will do an example and calculate the blade angles at the uh, hub, the mid radius and at the tip to demonstrate uh, how the flow becomes twisted as we go from the hub to the tip. Um, usually in the case of Kaplan turbines, the uh, flow leaves the blade without any swirl so that uh, V theta is equal to zero at exit. So that is the customary design uh, for a Kaplan turbine. Now, uh, a blade element of a Kaplan turbine blade is shown here. Um, so uh, here we can see that U1 is equal to U2 because it's an axial machine. And we also see that uh, C2 is greater than C1. So that DC is uh, positive. And so the pressure decreases uh, in the runner. Um, it generally, um, a Kaplan turbine uh, uh, installations are such that at entry to the blade, beta 1 is usually uh, negative, alpha 1 is usually positive. So you can see that this is the uh, reference direction, which is uh, the uh, uh, which is the axial direction. So V1 is in a counterclockwise direction to the reference direction. So alpha 1 is positive and C1 is in a clockwise direction to the uh, reference direction. So uh, beta 1 is negative. Here, beta 2 is also negative because C2 is in the clockwise direction. And uh, the exit velocity triangle uh, shows clearly that V theta 2 equal to 0 since V2 is perpendicular to U2. So let us now try to uh, work out an example involving a Kaplan turbine. A small scale Kaplan turbine has a power output of 8 megawatts and available head at a turbine entry of 13.4 meters and a rotational speed of 200 RPM. The inlet guide vanes have a height of 1.6 meter. The diameter at the trailing edge surface is 3.1 meter. The runner diameter is 2.9 meter and the up to tip ratio is 0.4. Assuming the efficiency to be 92%, determine uh, the radial and tangential components of velocity at exit from the guide vanes and the flow angle, component of axial velocity at the runner, absolute and relative flow angles upstream and downstream of the runner at the hub mid radius and tip okay so the efficiency is given to be 0 0.92 and uh, the output power is given to be 8 megawatts so the hydraulic power is equal to rho times g times q times h so the output power is 0 0.92 times this from which we can get the flow rate to be 66.15 meter cube per second. So clearly looking at the head and the flow rate, we can see that this uh, installation is uh, ideal for a Kaplan turbine uh, because Kaplan turbine works with low head and high uh, flow rate. At the exit of the guide vanes, now the flow rate is known. So at the exit of the uh, guide vane, the uh, flow area is uh, the perimeter pi times dg times height of the guide vanes multiplied, uh, now, uh, multiplied by the uh, radial component of velocity. So from which we get the radial component of velocity to be 4.245 meter per second. Now, um, uh, the blade element at the tip uh, or a blade element at any other location is expected to produce the same power. So if I apply oil turbo machinery equation to the blade element at the tip, we get P equal to rho times Q times V theta 1 times U1, since V theta 2 equal to 0. Uh, U1 may be evaluated as pi times n times d1 over 60, uh, which is equal to 30.37 meter per second. So it follows that at the entrance to the rotor at the blade tip, uh, the swirl velocity comes out to be 3.982 meter per second. Note that the basis for this expression is the fact that every blade element uh, or any blade element in the uh, in the rotor is expected to generate the same power. 
Okay, so what we have calculated here is V theta 1, the swirl velocity at entrance to the blade at the tip section. Okay, since the runner is a free vortex design, the tangential velocity at the exit of the guide vane is nothing but so r times v theta remains constant. So the tangential velocity at the exit of the guide vane is v theta 1 times the tip radius divided by the radius at the exit of the guide vane. So basically what we are doing here is the following. So we know v theta at the tip of the blade and we know uh, the diameter at the tip here and the diameter at the exit of the guide vane. So by using the fact that V theta times R is a constant in a free vortex design, we can evaluate V theta at the exit of the guide vane. That is what we are doing here. So the subscript G here denotes a guide vane, exit of guide vane. So V theta G is equal to 3.725. We already know the uh, radial velocity at uh, the exit of the guide vane. So the absolute flow angle at the exit of the guide vane may be evaluated as or tangent of V theta G divided by V or G, which is positive uh, 41.27 degrees. Uh, in the runner, the flow area is nothing but pi times D tip square minus D hub square divided by four. And when we multiply this by the axial velocity, we get the flow rate uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the runner. And if we uh, substitute the numbers, we get the axial velocity in the runner to be equal to 11.922 meter per second. And from the velocity triangle, we know that Vx1, which is this, is also equal to Cx1. So Cx1 is also known now. Now at the tip, alpha 1 uh, is arc tangent of V theta 1 divided by Vx1. And this comes out to be 18.47 degrees. Notice that. Uh, from the velocity triangle at the tip of the blade, uh, alpha 1 is arc tangent of V theta 1, which is this segment divided by Vx1. So uh, we get alpha 1 to be positive 18.47 degrees. Notice that U1, which is the blade speed, is 30.37, and that is greater than V theta 1, which is 3.982, which means that C theta 1 is U1 minus V theta 1 equal to 26.388 and the uh, blade angle at inlet is negative. Okay. And this blade angle may be evaluated as arc tangent of C theta 1 divided by Cx1 which is 65.69 degrees and we attach a negative sign to this value. Continuing with the tip, so we have completed the calculation at the inlet section, uh, at the inlet of the runner, at the tip section. Uh, now we can go to the exit. At the uh, exit, uh, beta 2 is arc tangent of C theta 2 divided by Cx2. Okay. And uh, uh, since uh, the exit, uh, V theta 2 equal to uh, 0, C theta 2 becomes equal to U2. And Cx2 is also equal to Vx2. So we can see from here that uh, uh, C theta 2 equal to U2. So this is C theta 2 that's equal to U2. And this is Cx2 and that is equal to V2 or that's also equal to Vx2. So we can uh, rewrite this expression as uh, beta 2 equal to arc tangent of U2 divided by Vx2. Now U2 equal to U1 because it's an axial machine. So U2 is equal to 30.37 meter per second. And Vx2 equal to Vx1. Again, the flow area remains the same. So uh, we take Vx2 to be equal to V1 since the volume flow rate remains the same. So that value is also known. So beta 2 comes out to be 68.57. Uh, and we attach a negative sign to this. Okay, so as we have calculated all the quantities that are uh, uh, asked for in the problem, namely the uh, angle of the guide vanes, flow angle at the exit of the guide vanes, uh, flow angle at the inlet of the rotor. Notice that these two values are different because the flow changes from being radial at the exit of the guide vanes to axial at the inlet to the runner, which is in contrast to the Francis turbine. Uh, we have also calculated the blade angle at the inlet to the runner and the blade angle at exit to the runner. So it is straightforward to repeat this exercise for the mid radius section and the hub section. And uh, students are encouraged to uh, do this exercise for these two sections. 
and make sure that they are able to get these values. Now, looking at the values, we can see that you know the blade angle uh, at the hub is minus 10.43 degrees, and in, it increases all the way to minus almost 66 degrees at the tip. And again, at the, at the outlet, the angle changes from minus 45 to about minus 68 or so. So this sort of variation at the inlet shows clearly why the blade appears to be uh, so highly twisted in the case of a uh, in the case of a Kaplan turbine. This completes our discussion uh, of uh, the uh, Kaplan turbine.